our friend Norma McCorvey, her love for God and life. Norma McCorvey's pro-life testimony is a gift of love. Norma was our sister, our friend. In 1973, Roe v. Wade made abortion slash baby killing legal. They needed an unsuspecting plaintiff. And they went after Norma McCorvey. At an anti-abortion protest in front of the U.S. Supreme Court in 2008, Norma McCorvey and several women, including Evangelist Alveda King, the niece of Martin Luther King Jr., joined the Justice Foundation as they shared their pro-life testimonies. Alveda King is reported as having said, the Negro cannot win as long as he is willing to sacrifice the lives of his children for personal comfort and safety. Don't just think about yourself, think about others. The abortion lobby pays billions a year to kill babies and dehumanize their mothers. In 1995, Norma McCorvey prayed. God opened her eye. Then Norma blew the whistle. In 1998, she was confirmed into the Catholic faith, telling the Associated Press that year, I don't believe in abortion even in an extreme situation. If the woman is impregnated by a rapist, it's still a child. You're not to act as your own God. In 2005, the Supreme Court rejected McCorvey's challenge to the Roe v. Wade ruling, but Morana says Norma would hope the pro-life movement can one day reverse the decision. Just the way she was taken advantage of, she feels like the abortion industry continues to exploit women, and she would like to see the ex to stop the killing of the children and stop the exploitation of women. Norma McCorvey formed her own group, Row No More Ministry, in 1997. She traveled across the country speaking out against abortions. McCorvey died on Saturday of heart failure. She was in an assisted living center outside of Houston. McCorvey was 69 years old. Norma's heart was won and transformed by love, not money. Joan Lewis, EWTN's Rome Bureau Chief, met Norma McCorvey and heard her story firsthand. Joan now joins us from Rome. Joan, how did you meet Norma McCorvey and what struck you about her? Well, we met in 2013 when a whole bunch of us were in New York to mark the 20th anniversary of Priest for Life with Father uh, Frank Pavone. And we had three or four days together sharing meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And, and I heard her entire story from her difficult childhood to the point in, of course, we have said that she is the Roe of the Roe v. Wade decision in 1973 at the Supreme Court that, that legalized abortion. And um, her life was very difficult up to that time. She was very young. She was in her uh, third pregnancy, an unwanted pregnancy. She was trying to figure out what to do because, of course, abortion was not legal in the States. And these lawyers came along and said they would help her. This is the part of the story that struck me more than anything else in talking to her. These lawyers said they would try and help her, help her through the pregnancy. Well, the long and short of it is she really was deceived, misled by these lawyers. She never had an abortion herself, and she never even went to court. But before she knew it, you've got the Supreme Court case decided, the Supreme Court siding on the side of abortion and it became illegal it, uh, it became legal in 1973 so to see her anguish at something she thought was just going to be lawyers helping her in a personal decision become something that affected our entire country and she lived with that anguish for such a long time Joan what do you think led her to change her mind about abortion and become part of the pro life movement from a spiritual point of view Actually, I'll tell you what it was. Here, she was working to help people with abortions. She was familiar with doctor's offices. She herself was in her third pregnancy. One day, she's in a doctor's office, and she sees a chart on the wall, and it was a fetal development chart. And she looked at it and just, like, had this epiphany of, oh, my gosh, I've had three children. I've, uh, I've been there when abortions uh, were, were taking place, illegal, of course. But she said, all of a sudden, I realized this was human life. Abortion was the deliberate taking of a human life in the womb of a mother. And, and so when she realized that, she then dedicated the rest of her life to o trying to overturn 
the decision that she had been instrumental in, in helping the court pass in 1973. So uh, faith became a very big part of her life. She was baptized as an adult. Father Frank Pavone brought her into the Catholic Church, confirmed her um, in 1998, and then she spent years giving talks and being part of the March for Life, trying to overturn that dreadful Roe v. Wade decision. It's a pretty profound story uh, after a pretty profound life. Joan Lewis, EWTN's Rome Bureau Chief, thanks so much for talking with exactly. us. Exactly. My pleasure. Shameful fake news would have us believe that Norma McCorvey was a mercenary. Nothing could be further from the truth. For those of us who knew and loved Norma, we know that in the end, Norma loved God and Norma loved life. Never believe fake news. Fake news baited and switched on Norma just before her death. According to Reverend Frank Pavone, National Director of Priest for Life, Norma wrote to him saying that she'd been booked for an interview for AKA Jane Rowe. Norma was so excited. They promised to let her tell her story and told her they would pay her for it. From my personal perspective, they interviewed Norma and took her words out of context. Norma McCorvey's conversion to Christianity in 1995 led her to become one of the most devoted pro-life advocates of our time. Her pro-life testimony is truly a gift of love. The authors of Roe v. Wade used Norma. They lied to her. The pro-life family loves Norma. We thank God for Norma's love for life. Her memory lives on in our hearts. God bless Norma McCorvey. She gave her all for God. She gave her love for life. Today's the day the Lord has made the day we planned a goodbye. Your life has just begun, my precious little one. And I pray one day that you'll understand why you're a chosen child of love, sent from heaven above, and God knew just what He wanted. Chosen child of love Sent from heaven above And God knew just 